fat shaming can go f- yourself. I think that we've been so conditioned to normalize fat shaming that we are not allowed to speak up for ourselves. Fat shaming can kiss my goddamn ass. There's no words that anyone can tell me about my body that I haven't said to myself. So to have someone heckle me at a New York City marathon from the sidelines, mind you, he's not running. And he tells me, it's going to take your fat ass forever. And he had the audacity to repeat that more than once. Nobody goes out there and says, hey, I brush my teeth, wash my face, going out for this marathon, I'm going to get fat shamed at mile 22. I grew up in New York City. When I think about the 80s and the 90s, even down to like the early 2000s, it was really sketchy. You know, at certain parts of the day, it was like curfews were implemented, not because like, hey, it's dark outside, it's time for you to go in. It was more like it might be three o'clock and they start shooting at this hour. There were certain times where you just didn't feel safe enough to explore certain things like my respective sport of running. If you saw someone like me running in my neighborhood, other people were gonna follow you because they're like, okay, who's getting shot? You know, so that's like the the common joke. But it's like, you know, sometimes these jokes aren't funny. You, you find humor in the darkness, essentially. I turned to fitness somewhere around my mid twenties. I was diagnosed with sciatica, disc degeneration, herniated disc. I was well over 265 pounds. I wasn't happy. I got thrown into fitness simply because I wanted to have some type of chance of actually living. And somewhere along the way, I ended up falling in love with it. While training for my full marathon, I had someone tell me, well, why aren't you smaller? You know, for someone that runs, you know, that many miles, you should be much smaller than you are. I was 165 pounds and I was hovering around a size eight and I still had people telling me I was fat. I remember collapsing at one point when I was on my way to work. I remember going into the hospital. They said, listen, you're running anywhere between 25 to 45 miles a week. You are in the gym, you are working out and you, have, you don't have a sedentary job. You are starving yourself. And I found myself here being diagnosed in the room with a form of anorexia and I just, it didn't click. You don't hear about eating disorders at that size because society has told them that they don't belong. Having a doctor telling me, hey, this is just as unhealthy, if not worse, than what you were trying to run away from to begin with. You have to find some type of balance. So I stopped fixating myself on the number or looking at the scale and letting that dictate me along with other people's comments. And I really found my voice around this point because I realized listening to everyone else, I'm not gonna find a happy pill. Fat shaming sometimes look like family members. Fat shaming sometimes look like friends. It looks like coworkers. We have to ask ourselves, who are we to question someone else's health in that aspect? It, people don't realize your words, like this sticks and stones theory that we've been conditioned to like, you know, groom our kids and we teach them over the years, is bullshit. It is, it is the most hurtful thing that you can do. I recently lost a, sorry. <laughs> I recently lost a follower that I connected with on Instagram from suicide. He checked in with me every week, every week after he read my article. All of a sudden I stopped hearing from him. I got contacted by his family members and they said, I'm sorry, um, thank you so much for actually checking on him, but you just taught us a lesson. His family members were his hecklers. He was the last message I had from him. He told me he was scared to go to Christmas because he's gay and his family members think he's too fat. And he knew that sitting down at the table with his family members means that he was going to be the pun in the life of the party at his expense. That's what fat shaming does to people. I'll do the hard work. Now I happen to be fortunate enough to actually get uh, make enough noise that people pay attention to me. 
but there's so many communities who are left out of this conversation. I have friends who are from different countries who are not included in these conversations. When I get some of my emails, these are not emails just, just coming from Americans. I'm getting emails from people in India. Where do they fit? Where do they fit into this body positivity conversation? When I think about my friends who are Muslim and they're wearing a hijab, and you have people that's looking at them weird, like you can run like that. Where do they fit in this body positivity conversation? So while I am exceptionally thankful for the community that I have and the allies that I have in this conversation, there is so much more work to do.